has been amazing. It's a great show. I'm really excited to share it with all of you. Um, before I say anything else, I do have a few content warnings. So the show has homophobia, anti-Semitism, abusive relationships, there will be gunshot sound effects, strong language, and discussion of sexual assault and implied sexual content. Um, besides that, I just want to say that I'm really thankful for Marilyn for letting me assistant direct this show. This is my first time being on the other side of the stage, so it's been a really rewarding experience. And I want to say that this show means a lot of different things to a lot of different people, but personally I think it's a story about the very interesting circumstances that bring everyone together, ultimately, but Marilyn. Hi, um, I'm Marilyn Shotland, I'm the writer and the director. Um, it's so great to have so many people here tonight. Thank you all so much for coming out. Um, this process got started nearly a year ago when I was in a uh, class, uh, Jeff Packard's writing for performance that took place in this space. I wrote the first two scenes of this play in here um, and then cut to a couple months later after I'd finished writing my History of Art Honors thesis and I was like, I need another obsessive writing project to really sink my teeth into. So I decided to work on the play for the next couple of months. And here we are, a year later, it feels very surreal. Um, this is my first play. This is also my first time directing. So it's been an incredibly gratifying experience to be able to work with an incredible prod team, an incredible cast, and we're gonna have a really, really good show tonight. Um, I think I've also tried over the past month or so as we've gone through the process to pare down the pitch for the show into you know, like a few succinct words. So it kind of was like, okay, this is a queer Jewish noir Shakespeare inspired play. Uh, I don't know how much that works. But to give you a bit of, better bit of a rundown, this play encompasses a lot of different genres. Um, the love story, the Jewish story, the gay story, the noir story. It takes inspiration from a Shakespeare play, the immigrant story, and perhaps, most importantly, the love story. Or no, the love story. <laughs> um, wanting to write and to see characters who were like me, that I would say gay and Jewish. And that's kind of what I set out to do when I wrote this play. So without further ado, I think it's something to be called Richard. <laughs> No, I don't like those. Let me freaking care. <laughs> I'm sorry, Rachel, but as I've told you many times before, you cannot order the cards about. It's a dialogue, not a soliloquy. I cannot guarantee the accuracy of the reading if I let you change them now. Spoil sport? No, thank you. Why don't you leave the interpretation to me? That's what you hate. Right? God knows why I do. Seven of Cups. This little endeavor of yours could prove quite fruitful. It better be, Val. God knows the dipping is going to pay for itself. We've got repairs coming out of our ears. The leader was a flop. I had to call in just about my last favor to get a hold of Theo. Interesting choice. Have you decided what you're going to put on next? Herman's pushing for a tragedy, but I'm looking for something a little more romantic. The lovers? I believe you have your answer, although. What? You read the gossip columns, Rachel. I heard that Miss Howard's gotten into a spot of trouble recently. This timing of yours. 
door seems awfully convenient. Huh. You don't miss a trick, do you? Darling, if I did, I'd probably be dead. <laughs> Temperance, reversed. Tell me, how many angels have you ever wrestled? I'm not the yeshiva drop out, so you tell me. <laughs> <laughs> it would be prudent of you to seek balance. Ugh, that isn't the most I've gotten out of you all day. You never took so, what will it be, Romeo and Juliet? Mm, Theo would make an excellent Mercutio. It's such a waste to have a guy in the third act. Too true. There was that vamp picture she was in in 32 with Cecil Fielding. I remember the posters. How could one wound birth opposite pillars of flights and innocence? See Theo Howard in her dual roles as the Dahlia twins. Brought the picture, but she was quite good in it. That's a thought. What is? Twins, it's been ages since the Divix done a comedy. Now, Val, you've given me a lot to think about. Now, on the subject of payment, I do think you'll rather enjoy this. We all have our vices. I didn't expect you to come in so early, Detective. You said five o'clock would be the perfect time to go over those files, Kaufman. Did I? Mikael Kofsky! It's been ages, how are you? Well, look at you! Ah, oh, still holding up, I see. You know, I read all about the George Basie case in the Forbes. Hmm. It's a damn shame what happened to his wife. She's behind bars because she put a bullet through his brain. The bastard deserved it! <laughs> <laughs> Goodness, I'm meeting with the producers in an hour for supper. I better be going. Same time next week, then? Of course, Mrs. Moranchik. Of course. Uh, goodbye, Detective. Val. you could come up with. Give it a rest, Val. Was it your mother that taught you to be completely insufferable to my friends, or was it the U.S. Army? She's your client, and she doesn't pay you. You know I don't accept money for this job. Clients only pay for what's on the menu. Besides, what do you call this? You ought to be more careful. I'm the Viscount of Vigilance. You wouldn't know discretion if it came up and asked you for a kiss. I'd be more than happy to oblige. I heard about what happened on the docks last night. I'm pleased to hear someone's been following me around again. Getting lonely, are we? Boys in the 7th Precinct have a new nickname for you. I'm sure it's something utterly scandalous. The rabbi of crime, the boot-legging boy chick from the Bowery, <laughs> or perhaps just that commie bag. Or is that more your department? <coughs> Do tell me, Mishka, I've heard them all. The magpie. How frightfully original. Haven't heard that one since they shut up the Dearborn Independent. Whatever will they come up with next? I can't keep sticking my neck out with you. I paid them off this time. Oh, how kind of you. But my cash doesn't hold as much sway as it used to. Nothing new has come in then. That's just the damn face of case. Maybe you'll finally ditch that stingy office of yours and come work for me. Oh, goody. <laughs> you know, you used to be so much more fun before they ratified that silly little amendment. Even when I was casing you on the docks at all obscene hours of the night? There used to be so many more people at shul. Nothing like absence to cause an uptick in piety. Every Friday was like the first night of Passover. You're just mad you had to find a sideline other than you're mistaken. This is my sideline. It didn't used to be. When you mix business with pleasure, you never know where you'll end up in the morning. Could be in the lover's bed or at the bottom of the Hudson. You're rather chipper today. And you're acting like a morose toddler. Why don't you get over here and put your clenching? Gone if, but the fortunes I tell are real. 
I thought you would have realized that by now. You know, it's not that I don't enjoy your company, but I would absolutely kill for a cigarette. Careful, Kaufman. You don't need to tell me twice. dingy office then. Or maybe I'll catch you following me alone one night. <laughs> Rather catch you in bed. I'd rather get right down to business. Oh, of course. 
Not exactly what I pictured when Rachel said she knew a gumshoe. Who are you expecting? Sam Spade? A.J. Raffles, actually. A criminal? I think he prefers the term gentleman thief, but the language is so silly. <laughs> Where do you think for an actress to say, Miss Howard? Oh, please call me Theo. Formalities make my skin crawl. How long did you work for Rachel? As a technician or as an investigator? You were a technician at the Dimmick. When? I ran lights for them for a few seasons before I joined up in 17. We must have missed each other by a few years. How odd. And as a PI? Two weeks. Her husband had gone missing and I was called in to help locate him. But Miss, you were the man involved with finding Herman. That must have been the season we did the Golden. I don't remember seeing you, though. There was another man involved, was there not? A tall, thin fellow, all black duds and cheekbones, like Leslie Howard with a keep up. I could have sworn he was a rabbi. <laughs> uh, local psychic named Calpin was brought in as a consultant. Claimed he had a certain talent for locating missing husbands. And did he? Last I heard, Rachel and Herman were approaching their 30th wedding anniversary. Awful talk. <laughs> so, do you have a missing spouse? Not quite. I'm in need of a shadow. A bodyguard. I need someone who knows the Divic. You have had a rather varied career, which makes you uniquely situated to my purposes. I'm afraid I'm in a rather precarious situation. Do you read gossip columns, Detective? I have a, a sort, a friend who does. Take a look at this. No, I'm sorry I can't help you. If you're involved with the Marcom family, there's simply nothing I can do. Detective, please. Damn it. I knew this was a bad idea. Mr. Obertsky! What did you just call me? Obertsky was your name before you changed it, correct? Detective, do sit down or I'm afraid you're likely to be run over by one of the dancers. Rachel told me all about why you came to work for her in the first place. Told you about St. Vladimir's? I always used to wonder about those types of one does hear rumors about what boys get up to in those sorts of places. I've heard the Markovs in press charges. How did you? That family is quite large and rather well connected. It's easy to change one name or make one sibling disappear from the spotlight. Since you seem to be so interested in dangling my personal history in front of me, I'll give you two minutes to tell me why I shouldn't walk out of that door right now. I am rather new at this business of having so many eyes on me. Perhaps you should have considered that before you signed up to have your face plastered all across the country. If any of this information were to leak out, my career would be finished. Rachel told me you specialize in these sorts of cases. I specialize in homicide. Blackmail is another sort of murder. Besides, I thought you of all people might be sympathetic. Let me make one thing abundantly clear. I don't go in for revenge thoughts. No, you don't seem like the type. You let them ruin your life. But I'm not going to roll over and let anyone have their way with me. How long is the show supposed to run? Six weeks. We open in February. All right, fine. Thank you, Detective. I'll take the case on two conditions. First, you double my salary. Done. Second, no more digging. Any muck that you scrape up means there's one more person who can go looking and find something unsavory. If I go down, I have a lot more on my plate than just your case. <laughs> oh. oh, Detective, forgive me. In truth, I thought you'd be much more difficult to win over. Excuse me? I'll stop snooping, although I've heard most of it already. What happened to him? Him? The boy. He died. I'm sure you can piece together the rest of the story. It's strange. What is? There's something about you. You're blurry around the edges, like a camera out of focus. I can't quite picture you as a priest or a soldier. Truth be told, neither can I. It's strange. What is? I thought you were going to apologize. <laughs> it has been lovely meeting you. It's Misha. I look forward to meeting with you. 
to shut. I'm afraid I must get going. I have a meeting with Rachel tomorrow at 9. I will be staying here. Come by tomorrow afternoon and we can discuss the we can negotiate the details of our money. Goodbye. Oh, and would you be so good as to get rid of those papers for me? Has the show been decided yet? Why, yes. We settled on it yesterday. Twelfth night. I'll see you tomorrow. I can't fight you 
if I'm dead. I have a proposition for you. I take you to Kaufman's and we drop this matter entirely. Is this agreeable to you? Not entirely. Kid, the only better offer you're going to get is from one of those fellows with a gun. And I don't think you're going to want to see how they keep their promises. Point taken. How do you propose to get us out of here? Is that your luggage? We each grab a bag and run. Use it as a shield if you have to. Are you out of your mind? I've been running for a lot longer than you have. So you are a criminal? Private investigator. Not sure that's the difference. <laughs> How old are you? What's it to you? I've got four brothers. The youngest is maybe about your age. Listen, the sooner we get out of here, the sooner you can get all the on me. What about you? What about me? Oh, don't play the old man act. You can't be older than 40. I'm 35. Thank you so much for asking. <laughs> we go on my count. Three, two, for fuck's sake, you're going the wrong way! Fuck! You better keep that, Zadie! <laughs> <laughs> How did you two come to be acquainted? I saved his life in an alleyway. Correction! She tried to jump me. Oh dear, for good reason. He was rude to me. <laughs> <laughs> I've always had my doubts about his manners. Why don't you go get, uh, go get all settled in? Uh, there's a bathroom down the hallway to your right. If you want to get freshened up and all, be right along. I'm sure. It would be nice to say that this was a pleasure, but I think we could both testify to the opposite. Farewell. Goodbye, Miss Pardo. That's your cousin? That's her. More to the point. What on earth are you doing here? It wasn't my idea. A couple of Basie's goons were on my trail near Washington Square Park, and then there she was, standing in the middle of the street, waiting to get run over. Picked a fight. How'd you guess? I did try to warn you. Ah, uh, yes, but did you call her a good girl? You must forgive my memory. The last time I saw her, she was this tall and had the most charming dimples. She almost kicked my teeth in. I'm sure you almost deserved it. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. I haven't seen her in years, but we've been corresponding ever since she could hold a pen and paper. It's strange to see her all grown up.
You should go. Someone might see. You're still stopping by my office on Saturday? I wouldn't miss it for the world. Now scurry along, you brute. I have a wayward cousin to attend to. Give my regards to Miss Howard. Ezra, did you find the bathroom all right? Oh, you have the strangest sink. I went to turn the handle, and the water shot straight up at me like a fire hose. I apologize. I should have warned you about that. I will never say no to hot water from a tap. It's so wonderful to finally see you in the flesh. How was your trip? Horrific. You know, Mother was surprised when you wrote the she thought you would have shuddered it off her in the past. Well, oh, there's always money to be made telling fortunes. How is Aunt Miriam? Is she still telling, reading poems in that poky little place in Eilenstadtstrasse? She got shut down a few months ago, but she's been doing readings in the apartment. Times may be hard, but people still want to know whether the true love has crooked teeth or green eyes. She wanted me to give you the Long ago. She found them in a trunk under her bed. Every card's there, although I'm not sure what happened to the Queen of Cups. This is quite the gift. How can I repay you? You said you might be able to get me a job. Barging in and asking for a place to stay enough? Please, I can't go back. You have no idea what it's like over there. I'm sorry. That was tactless. I had a rather trying day. No thanks to that sea, Captain. You're very welcome here, of course. As for a job, I could use someone to help around the shop. Your mother says your reading is no. getting... You won't even consider it. Nope. All right. How about an acting gig? I haven't been on the stage in years, not since the coming of the glorious Third Reich. Yes, I know. Do you remember that theater I told you about over the phone? The one named after a monster? Malevolent spirit. There's a difference. And the director is a client and a very good friend. And I have to know she's holding auditions for Twelfth Night. I'm sure she'd be more than happy to grant you a slot. You can't just go and join a company like that. Of course you can. Besides, you haven't even heard the kicker yet. Theo Howard is headline. You don't mean the woman who played the twins in Double Trouble. Very same. She's about as subtle as a gut punch. What the hell does she know about stage acting? She got her start at the Dimmick. And she's returning for a special limited engagement. You can get me an audition. I'll telephone Rachel tonight to make sure you're on the list. Thank you so much, Val. I will pay you back, I promise. I could be still use someone to help out around the shop. My last assistant ran off with some young fellow she met you a bintel with. <laughs> I read cards for nobody. Perfectly acceptable. Well, now that that's out of the way, would you like something to drink? We have tea, of course. But there's also a rather divine cabernet open, and there's the scotch that only gets uh, unstoppered when uh, wine is key. I'll take the wine. Excellent choice. Does he visit often? Who? Your friend, old boss. Oh, I hardly call him a friend. We've worked a few cases together, that's all. You seem to know the place rather well. Oh, I conduct all of my business here. There you are. To your arrival. Now, tell me all about what I've missed in Berlin. Do is get us more goddamn coffee. 
Dear, I really don't care. Hey, Lepofsky! Something I can do for you, Mr. Moratchik? Yeah. Why don't you go get us some more coffee? He's not an errand boy, Herman. <laughs> he should want you to be so good as to bring in the next person. <laughs> Check to see if Marty Epstein arrived to look at the boiler. <laughs> you know, you could have given me the name of a dozen PIs, but I think the real reason you sent me his way is because you knew how much it would annoy your husband. I was stupid of you to notice. Do you know how a pearl forms? A grain of sand slips its way inside an oyster, causing irritation and the production of something Terribly beautiful. I take it Herman is the oyster and Misha the grain of sand. Not quite so literally. I've always preferred the meat of the oyster. Salt on the tongue, a one-way ticket on an ocean liner at a fraction of a price. Better not let a rabbi catch you saying that. Pearls aren't trade. If they weren't, you probably wouldn't be here. Any word from Vera? No letters or telegrams. It's odd. She usually dives in head first, but I've heard nothing. Every morning I wake up and expect her to be there and the dread comes creeping over me. And then I realize she's not and it all dissipates. Is it wrong for me to feel happy? No, no, I don't think so. Olkowski's good at his job. Who else do we have left on the list? Joe Dash, Shoshana Weiss, Yael Goldberg, and Ezra Pardo. Pardo? It's not someone from the company, is it? No, it's uh, Val Kaufman's cousin. She just came from overseas looking for work. Who on earth would name her daughter Ezra? It sounds like a heroine in a Radcliffe Hall novel. What? Oh, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, apparently she had quite the act in Berlin before everything went to higgly piggly. What would a stripper know about Shakespeare? Not that kind of act. <laughs> <laughs> the one that knows. <laughs> Yes, that was an absolute darn man. I have a standing appointment with the every Tuesday. I didn't realize you were superstitious, Rachel. It pays to be in my line of work. It's easier to get a drunkard off the ground than a successful business. And what about Herman? Isn't he supposed to be dealing with that? <sighs> Herman is like any other man. He comes running home the minute he smells a hot meal. You, my dear, are the tastiest thing that Divick's had in ages. Audiences will come flocking. Are you sure you won't have me play by a while? No. We discussed this. People will expect you to play the option of what you want them. If you give people what they expect, you'll never sell another ticket. What do you have in mind, then? Oh, Lord help us, I suppose. It'll have to be a uh, Shoshana or a uh, yeah, Good, perfect timing, Misha. Good God, what happened to you? There was a certain young lady who decided it would be better if my face to get acquainted with her fist. Young lady? <laughs> Miss Ezra Pardo. I didn't punch him, he bumped into me. Uh, <laughs> I'm Rachel Moratchik, uh, the artistic director. This is Theo Howard, our fair Olympia. Are we starting up again already? <laughs> well, who is this strapping young lad? I'm Herbert Moratchik. I run the business side of things here. It's a pleasure. Miss Pardo, what do you have for us today? Violet is the act, 2025. Wonderful. Uh, Theo, would you find me? Of course, Rachel. All right. Whenever you're ready, dears. Good madam, let me see your face. Have you any commission from your lord to negotiate with my face? You are now out of your text, but we will draw the curtain and show you the picture. Look, sir, such a one as I was this present. Is it not well done? Excellently done. God did all. Tis in grain, sir. Twill endure wind and weather. Tis beauty truly blessed, whose red and white nature's own sweet and cunning hand laid on. Lady, you are the cruelest she alive who may plead these graces to the grave and leave the world no copy. Oh, sir, I will not be so hard hearted. I will give out diverse schedules of my beauty. It shall be inventoried in every Particle and utensil labeled to my will as item, two lips indifferent, red, item, two gray eyes with lids to them, item, one neck, one chin, and so forth. 
Were you sent hither to praise me? I see you what you are. You are too proud. But if you were the devil, you are fair. My lord and master loves you. Though such love could be but recompense, though you were crowned to none but I of beauty. How does he love me? With adorations, fertile tears, with groans that thunder love and sighs of fire. Your lord does not know my mind. I cannot love him. He could have took his answer long ago. If I did love you in my master's flame, with such a suffering, with such a deadly life, in your denial I would find no sense. I would not understand it. Why? What would you? Make me a willow cabin at your gate, and call upon my soul in the house. Write loyal cantons of contented love, and sing them loud even in the dead of night. Halloo your name to the reverberant hills, and make the babbling gossip of the air cry out, Olivia. <laughs> I think that's enough. Thank you, my dear. Of course, Miss Ellen. Oh, do call me Theo. Between you and me, I do think we will be spending a lot more time together. All right. Theo. So, where'd you manage to build you? Mm -hmm. The bubbly. You wound me. I am an honest, upstanding businessman, and I do manage to purchase some things with my own cash. Honest? That's not the word I would have chosen. Oh, and what says the intrepid detective? Most businessmen want their salt tend to do their dealing in the light of the day. You prefer the witching hour. You surprise me. After all you've seen, you still think there's such thing as an honest transaction. There's as much illegal business to be had over lunch in some greasy salaryman's office in Wall Street as there is in a dockside bar over in Brooklyn. So what about you? Why don't you go legitimate? Ganovan won Felipe of in Spanish. These are lovers like the dark, my dear Nishka. I never should have told you about that nickname. Only call me that when you want something. I do not. All right, perhaps I do. <laughs> At least I'm not as bad as Ezra. She's taken to calling you Kishka. And how is your esteemed cousin? You see her more often than I do these days. If you told me five years ago that I'd be back at the Divic watching your cousin make moon eyes at some flighty actress from Hollywood for double my usual pay, I would laugh at you. Moon eyes? Ezra tells me she can't stand Theo Howard. Ugh, she's seen it in rehearsal together. They can't keep their hands off of each other. That's called acting, Nisha. You don't think I can tell the difference? I can see when someone is besotted with someone else. What do you call this, moon eyes? You're an ignominious ass. <laughs> <laughs> you really think Theo and Ezra? Would it be so strange? I mean, look at the way she dresses. And besides, if she really didn't like Theo, why would she have gone and spent the night drinking champagne with her? You would think that a Hollywood starlet would have more illustrious company to spend the night with. 
Maybe we won't have to keep sneaking around. I don't know what would shock her more, that her cousin's a fatala, or that the man that he's screwing is you. <laughs> I still cannot believe you two are related. Enough about my cousin. Tell me about your client. It's been ages since I've been backstage. What do you do? Crawl about in the rafters looking for clues. You've never been interested in my work before. Let's just say it pays to know the working habits of one's enemies. Enemies? You are in the army, so I think you know all about privatization. The lawman and the Ghana. What a pair. You're not funny, pal. Would you look at that? It's almost three minutes to midnight. Do tell me more about the Dimmick. What's there to tell? Let's just say I have a vested interest in this little production of Rachel's, and I care to know what you see. Good God. You know, you weren't going to tell me. It's only temporary, Nishka. And besides, you're the one who keeps telling me to find some place to move everything. Temporary? You'll get busted by the NYPD faster than you can say Jack Ratton. Does Rachel know about this? She's agreed to it for a small cut of the profits. What if it goes wrong? You won't be able to wiggle your way out of it this time. We've timed it with the opening of 12 minutes. There'll be so much hubbub that no one will notice a few crates being moved in and out. I can't believe this. You're just using me so you can run some con? You're the one who keeps telling me to watch myself. Why not get you involved? Not like this. I never wanted any part of it. Did you have Rachel recommend me to Theo just so you could have another pair of eyes on the theater? Of course not, but I won't deny the convenience of the timing. Things are moving along swimmingly. So I don't get a say in any of this? You're a goddamn fool. I'm going to tell you this once and once only, oh, Michelle Colson. This thing that we have cobbled together, it's not going to work if you don't turn your head the other way when I ask you to. I changed my mind. Now I can see the resemblance. <laughs> what are you going to do? Wave a weapon in my face? Again? I didn't think you were one for melodrama. Says the man who had an oyster knife with my neck half a minute after meeting me. You're the detective. You should have known better than to trail me. Go stick your claws in someone else. Sorry, darling. I left them in my coat pocket. How appropriate. <laughs> pretty blade for a pretty boy. No, you really do look quite lovely. Well, well, this is certainly different. Miss Howard does keep you on a tight leash. You aren't the only one who gets to call the shots. Always so concerned, aren't you? It does get quite tiring. You listen to me! No, you listen to me. I know how to handle myself in situations like this. I have been doing this for a lot longer than you can imagine. You weren't untouchable. You know that, right? You're just some small-time fortune teller who manages to fly under the radar. Take what you want, but no one gives a damn. You hardly know what you want. Excuse me? You accuse me of wanting too much, and you? You flop around with your belly exposed for some fisherman's spear. And you know what the worst part is? You're not even big enough to warrant taking down to the market, so they toss you back into the sea. Not even birds you pluck at you. You did. Shut up. Took one look at me and decided to pick my bones clean. Say, shut up! Oh, you hope you would never get to the Thank you. 
froze five, five, God damn it! I'll never get. I'm fairly certain Shakespeare never wrote anything like that. <laughs> <laughs> I was told under no uncertain terms that I would be barred from entering the theater if I couldn't do it perfectly by Sunday. Shouldn't you be more concerned with, I don't know, memorizing your lines? <laughs> this is priority number one. Last night, asleep with Dove on my chest. I could have sworn I heard you come in around two in the morning. No, I was most certainly in bed. You must have heard someone getting out of the taxi. Right. Freddy froze. Fine, fine. Fuck! <laughs> <laughs> Can't possibly be that difficult. Here. You try it. <clears throat> Freddy froze five fried fish, fresh flesh fish fillets. Fried fresh <laughs> fish flesh. Good lord. <laughs> <laughs> I always thought Rachel's methods were a bit unorthodox, but that is cruel and unusual punishment. It was Misha's idea. <laughs> oh, I see. You haven't. You're referring to the events of New Year's Eve, which may I remind you I ask that we never speak of again. And yes, our dear detective hasn't cared to pay me a visit. Do you want to talk about it? Why on earth would I want to do that? <laughs> Too close. I fail to see how that is relevant. Val, I am intolerably boring these days. What about you? How are rehearsals? Is Theo giving you trouble? No, no. She's fine. Uh, I like her quite a lot, actually. She's kind and funny and always very professional. Are there any other epithets you wish to bestow upon her? <laughs> Rosy finger, ox eye. No. <laughs> it's just. There's something about her that I can't quite put my finger on. She's like that aquarium you took me to last night. Come again? You know those fish that glow in the dark? And angler fish. No, that's not what's called. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter. It's, it's like we're all standing in front of the tank and shouldn't flinch when you tap on the glass. Anyone with a sense of self-preservation would, but she doesn't. Well, if that's so surprising, she's a performer. She relishes in the attention. I've never met someone who offered something without expecting something in return. Pays to be kind to people. It's not like that. She's even nice to Harmon. Oh, good Lord, why? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would think Rachel would have the good sense to leave him by now. I don't know. I'll be up on stage and she's there. Like we're standing in a swimming pool by a stained glass window. And the light catches against all the dust, and you think you're outside of a storm. No. Why are you staring at me like that? No, no, nothing. No. I I was just remembering something. What's that supposed to mean? Absolutely nothing. Um, be a dear and see to the client. Would you? Good afternoon, welcome to Theo. Good afternoon, Ezra. Well, what are you doing here? I was actually looking for your cousin. Is he in? My cousin? I... He just left. Perhaps I should come back later. No, 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 you... Oh, you don't have to do that. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> He's disappearing through that curtain. I'm sure he'll be along in just a minute. So... So... <laughs> Are you off for a check? I was running the yellow stocking scene with David yesterday, and Rachel has declared me fit to perform. How come I'm the only one stuck doing these horrible exercises? Is it the one about the fried fish flesh fillets? I'm fairly certain she keeps adding more words to it. She gave it to me when I first started at the Divic years ago. I don't see what the point of it is. I'm completely memorized. She's an unknowable force. Put her in a ring and she'd slug the jelly out of you. A real prize fighter. <laughs> 
Did you just come by for a friendly chat before rehearsal, or do you actually want to talk to them? Yes, I wanted to speak with him about a party I'm giving. A party? I'm holding a little get-together over at my apartment after opening night. You are invited, of course. Masks, music, canapes, cocktails, and hopefully some entertainment. Entertainment? I was hoping to hire Professor Kaufman to perform for our guests. He came highly recommended. Why on earth would anyone recommend him? <laughs> because, my dear, I am the only psychic in this town who actually knows what they're doing. <laughs> Miss Howard, I presume. Yes, and you are Professor Kaufman? Indeed. Does that follow for me? Yes. Rachel said you preferred this picture. <laughs> Chateau Paraguay 1922. How generous. I only wish to pay my respects, Professor. Please, call me Val. Short for Valerie. No, Valentine, if you can believe it. My mother had a sense of humor that began and ended with this shop. Your mother was also a psychic. Oh, from a long line of fortune tellers. Though she didn't have a smidgen of prediction in her, she had more felonious leanings. Good for doing business. Oh, well, that's <laughs> quite interesting. I apologize. I guess, of course. She would never dream of doing anything illegal. The only crime she ever committed was having the walls painted a horrible violet color. I had them papered over when she died. It's a lovely shock. You know, Ezra's branch of the family is <laughs> much more accomplished in the clairvoyant side of things. Really? You never told me. I don't do it much anymore. Well, if you'd like to follow me into my office, I'm sure you can get what you wanted all sorted out. I'll be right along. Of course. Dog, you ignoble beast, for the last time, off my desk! The <laughs> cat. <laughs> I'm sorry about my cousin. Is he normally like that? For some reason, I expected him to be much more severe. He had a falling out with a friend a while ago, and he's been moping ever since. You call that moping? <laughs> it must have been some friend. So, you read tarot cards. My mother told me. He wasn't lying about that, then. Oldest family of fortune tellers in Berlin. Perhaps he would do a reading for me sometime. Tell me if there's a tall, handsome stranger in my future. That's not really how it works. Is there anything else I can do? Yes, I was wondering if we could go over 3.1 on Saturday. I mean, don't think Rachel has a schedule to go over it for quite a while, and I still don't feel solid on it. We could go over that tongue twister too, if you like. I like that very much. I think it's great by the dinner. I was thinking my apartment, actually. You'd like it. It has a lovely view. Of course, only if it's not too much trouble. No, that would be perfect for me. I look forward to it. It was lovely to see you, my dear. Why don't you put some of that big brain of yours to use then and help me solve this problem? Isn't 
isn't exactly what I was expecting when you hired me. You're supposed to make sure that none of this falls apart. <laughs> <laughs> Last minute party planning wasn't in the contract. And besides, nothing's happened. How can you be so sure? Vera hasn't tried to contact you in months. My guy in Hollywood says she's occupied filming a new project. So everything is going according to plan? Yes. You're right. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to snap at you. How's the pick? It's all right. It'll be better once the weather clears up. You, uh, don't have anything written for entertainment. I don't? How odd. I thought I made a note of it. I hired that friend of yours. Which friend? Val Kaufman. What? Gracious, I'm not the answer. You hired Kaufman to be your entertainment? What? Nowadays. You, you have no idea what that meant. Good afternoon. It's a good gracious house here. Little girl flew off on the way here. Didn't want to be late. Oh my goodness, you're so true. We absolutely cannot have you getting sick on the account of punctuality. Well, the rain and rain is every day. <laughs> <laughs> my dear, you're running a fever. I think I'll see myself out then, shall I? Theo, I'll see you tomorrow. Tomorrow. Bye, Ezra. Goodbye, <laughs> You sit down and I'll make you something hot. What about rehearsing? Damn the rehearsing! You need to rest. I don't need to rest. You sit down right there and I'll make you a cup of cocoa. Make yourself at home. I'll be all right in just a moment. Sit! <laughs> <laughs>
It's funny, the more names you give someone, the more you begin to lose sight of who they truly are. What about you? Do you miss Berlin? I don't know anymore. Not everything, but some things. My mother's cooking. The smell of jasmine in our apartment. Missed rising off the spree after I laid out dancing. Well, if it's dancing you miss, I'm sure we can fix that. Take my hand, sir. My duty and most humble service, madam. What is your name? Cesario is your servant's name, sweet grandma. My servant, sir! Twas merry world since lowly fading was called a compliment. You are the servant to Count Orsino. But he is yours and his must needs be yours. Your servant's servant is your servant, madam. For him, I think not on him. For his thoughts, would they were blanks rather than filled with me. Dear madam, I come to wed your general thoughts on his behalf. Oh, by your leave, I pray for you. I bade you never speak again of him. But would you undertake another suit? I would rather hear you to solicit that than use it from the spear. Dear lady. Dio, are you there? I think I forgot. What did you forget, Nisha? Am I interrupting something? We were just rehearsing. I'll see myself out then, shall I? It's fine, we were almost finished. I'll see you next week, Ezra. Damn it all to hell. What happened to everything is fine. Don't you start! Nothing like this has ever happened before. I thought this was exactly what you came to New York to escape. This was different. She kissed you. No. Yes, sir. I think you should go home, detective. Marshal Peyton's armistice. Who fought in the war? Everyone fought in that war. So you are an old man. You don't have to rub it in. <coughs> what did someone like you do going into this line of work? You mean, why did a homosexual with a limp decide to go chasing criminals? No. <laughs> did you mean to say that? Came out of my mouth, didn't it? He makes you do things differently. Maybe. Running after you was a stupid idea. Why did you come running after me? You can't just go kissing people in broad daylight. She kissed me! You don't believe me. I don't think the police are going to care about who kissed who. All they're going to see are two women engaging in immoral and indecent behavior. Is that what you said to Val when you broke it off with him? We are not discussing that. 
Why not? It's private. Oh. You come running after me, expecting me to spill my guts to you, after the most beautiful woman in the world, who I will probably ever meet, decided to kiss me. I don't go sharing information freely unless the other person does so in return. Well, neither do I. You just <laughs> called yourself a homosexual with a limp. That's a known <laughs> fact. You're a bastard. <laughs> Thank you for noticing. Fuck you. Fuck you! <laughs> Sebastian Best, all flecked with arrows like some sort of holy porcupine. The hangman? The saint. No, I mean he looks like the hanged man in terror. Upside down against a tree? I wouldn't know. So you figured it out by looking at a painting of a half-naked man? No. It was a boy a few years later. He and I... about you. There was a girl in a theater company I was a part of who moonlit as a cabaret performer on the side. She had freckles everywhere. Her lips, her shoulders, her... You get the idea. I told me winter in New York was brutal, but I wasn't expecting this. Well, this... second. Take it. Won't you freeze to death? I survived a couple months in the trenches. I think I'll be fine. Is that why he calls you a bear? No. <laughs> <laughs> Just put on the damn sweat. Here, take this too. Thank you, Misha. Sorry about earlier. Maybe you should try talking to her. Maybe you should try talking to him. Besides, she gets crappy if she isn't well to dance. 
Are you buying or selling? Stick it on. I'm doing nothing of the sort. A double scotch on the rocks? And you? The same. I haven't seen you around here before. I take it this isn't your usual home? Used to be. You are not from around here, are you? Like Sandra and other you. Two immigrants walk into a bar. Only a visitor. Wait a moment! You're that woman who came badgering me at my shop the other day. I was wondering how long it would take you to remember. What on earth are you doing here? Research, mainly. Research? There are bars like this all across the city. No, no, no. Um, you could say I specialize in women's work. Embroidery? Medieval tapestries. <laughs> Fancy me. Meaning an academic. Uh, not quite yet. I'm studying for my doctorate at the salon. What? What on earth possessed you to come here? If I lived in Paris, I would never leave. <laughs> Dissertation research. I'm studying the symbology of astronomical and astrological phenomena in 16th century Flemish te textile work and material objects. Interesting. <laughs> yes, I think so too. <laughs> Why come to my shop then? It fascinates me that fortune telling is still a profession. It's not exactly a legal one. I do some consulting work on the side. Oh, yes, your sign did say something about missing husbands. All right, Mr. Psychic. Riddle me this. Why on God's great green earth is this bar called the Pachyderm? That's your question. Yes, and I think it's a perfectly sensible one. All right, so the story goes, 50 years ago, there used to be a circus here, and around this area is where they kept the elephant cages. When the whole thing went bankrupt at the turn of the century, the owner decided to set up a watering hole. Much more profitable business. Is it always catered to? Hard to say. Wouldn't be so surprising, though, given its origins. Freak shows still bring in plenty of money. What do you mean, freak shows? Are any of the bars in Paris like this? I suppose so. You get all sorts. Queers, lesbians, inverts, fairies, men's boys, and platinum girls. There's nothing monstrous about any of it. You seem very confident in that conclusion. Aren't you as well? Any virtuous part of me has long since been swallowed up. How do you know I'm not a malevolent spirit wrapped up in the skin of a man? I don't think you would be here if you thought any of that. I suppose that's true. Juvenile. Valentin Kaufmann. Oh, you're named after a plague saint. <laughs> no, I'm named after my father, Count Valentin von Zulzbach. You are named after the patron saint of lost causes. You're an interesting man, Mr. Kaufmann. Please, you'll have to buy me another drink before I even begin to consider what that means. He told you, we're ready spoken for. Oh, good. Here comes the Americans in 1917. I thought you weren't ex expecting anybody but friend of yours? Private eye. Bloody hell. It's all right. It's like a great big borzoi. You rip your throat out. No. He comes when he's called. <laughs> Gladly. Hello, detective. <clears throat> I've been looking everywhere for you. Wonderful to see you, too. You look dreadful. We need to talk. Gracious, you're granting me the designation of a suitable conversation partner? I'm thrilled! You have to be careful with these ones, Jew. You have to give them what they want for first before they can give you the kind of day. All pillow talk, no foreplay. You go somewhere more private? Always so concerned about discretion, aren't you? Don't worry, if there's a raid, I'm sure you're Friends in law enforcement can bail you out. It was very nice to meet you, Mr. Calvin. I think it would be best if I left. Do stay. Let's just take long. All right, fine. The stuff you're keeping over at the Divic, it isn't safe there anymore. What? Why on earth should I trust you? Be an idiot not to. I think most people don't go running back to their ex-lovers when they're in trouble. When the seventh precinct received an anonymous tip off about a couple of stolen crates being kept at the divot, there's a raid being planned for tomorrow night. 
I thought we had washed our hands clean of each other's business. This isn't just about you, Val. If the Divics found harboring stolen property, that we shut down for good. Plenty of people's jobs and livelihoods depend on the success of this show. Rachel's, Theo's, your cousin. Don't worry, you'll find another case if this one goes sour. You always do. This isn't just another case. Oh, really? I didn't have you picked out as the P.I. with the heart of gold. You care too much for your own good. I tried not caring and people died because of it. I used to go numb for so long that I called it a habit. I let it rule my every action, every move, every breakfast in a diner at 2 a.m. It is terrifying to care. To let someone reach so far down inside of you and play surgery till you can't tell your gallbladder apart from your spleen. It's like when you've had too much coffee and you're dancing with a partner who's always two steps ahead of you. You could have walked away from this at any time, but you kept crawling back. Because you kept letting me in. I don't know what I thought it was between us, but I was a fool to think it could ever be anything approaching normalcy. It's a gap the size of New York Harbor between you and I. Hell! Probably there from the beginning. So here I am, Val. I give a damn. It's about time you did the same. The only you're writing is very American. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry I made you sit through all of that. I don't think I could have stood it if it had just been the two of us. I see worse. Ex-lover, ex-buddy, ex-pal, ex-partner in crime. But it's a queer romance. Yes. It's certainly a charmer. Let me make it up to you somehow. Would you let me buy you another drink? Or what are your thoughts on Shakespeare? I prefer the comedies over the tragedies. Why? How would you like a pair of front row tickets to the Debits production of Twelfth Night? The director is a friend of mine, and by all accounts, it's a first class show. I always thought that one ended rather tragically. What? Really? Violet and Orsino are happy, of course, but poor Olivia. I can't think she would ever be happy with a man who might look like the person she fell in love with, but is probably completely different. And Antonio and Malvolio, for that matter. I suppose there has to be some modicum of grief in every comedy? Maybe. What was the name of the theater again? I've seen that name before somewhere. It's a, it's a monster, right? With a goat? Less substantial. No clay or mud. Some might call it a monster. Add it to that list you rattled off a few minutes ago. Cousin to the fairy, nephew to the pansy. Others might just say it's a man who can't see a way forward. All this to say, you're perfectly welcome to the tickets. You've got me all intrigued now. All right, I'll go. It's funny. When I was little, I always wanted to be an actress, but I couldn't act at the dam. I've never seen a play in Yiddish before. Shouldn't be too hard to follow if you know it already. It's not supposed to be a production you'll be quick to forget. Lots of singing and dancing and all that. Good sets, too. Should I be worried about the cops showing up to rescue? Mm, no, you're not tainted simply from associating with me. And what about your friend? Oh, I don't have anything to worry about from him. Rather the opposite, actually. Wenn er gar nicht küscht, darf man sich die Zähne besehen. And what does that mean? When a thief kisses you, count your teeth. <laughs> <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Padding along at his side. No double double toil and trouble. I think you're mixing things up. He looks rather lonely. What would you choose for me? You. The Queen of Cups. Too bad she's not a countess. She's very regal. She represents mastery of emotion. She knows which way the current flows, but also how not to get the feedback. What about Misha? Oh, Halsey. The Knight of Swords. I can't very much see him riding off into battle. He tried to attack me the first time we met. I heard it was the other way around. Depends on who's telling the story. Are you sure he wouldn't be this fellow? That would make him a member of your court. Excellent. I wish to have as many admirers as possible. <laughs> I don't think it would be too difficult to find vast legions who would drop everything to kneel before me. And what about you? Would you be my fair squire? No. Such insolence! I beseech you to swear fealty at once. Squire, then what? The fool. One step below the magician. Constantly on a precipice. You don't know whether he's going to fall off with nothing to catch him. At least he has a dog to let him know that he's getting too close to the edge. Don't you think you'll hear it barking? Maybe he will, or maybe he won't. And what need have I for a fool in my court? I already have Misha. <laughs> <laughs> you need a fool to hold you back before you teeter into something so horrible that once you find back out, everything will be different. Can't you ask the cards what the future holds? Anyone who tells you that they can predict the future is a fraud. You can't just demand an answer. It's really more of a conversation. Sounds like being stuck on an analyst's couch. The inimitable Dr. Freud poking around with my skull for an answer. I'm sure he'd have a few choice words for me. Here is a perfect doomed specimen, a resident of Lesport, <laughs> transported out of time, a freak of nature. Her sorry tale is too ghastly for even the most gruesome of medical textbooks. God, I'm sorry. Why do you apologize? For what happened at my apartment, I should have known better. 
I can't tell you the number of times some director or movie star has invited me over for drinks and grabbed at something that wasn't his. Why did you do it? Maybe because I wanted to? Because I didn't think you'd run away. I didn't run away? You left. You told me to go. I would have stayed longer if you'd given me the chance. You deserve better than someone who would try to take advantage of you. Theo, I kissed you back because I wanted to. Hell, I have been thinking about it since I walked into the audition three months ago and you offered me a cigarette. God, you're shaking. I'm fine. Theo. Please don't touch me. You're not a freak of nature. There was another doctor who would have disagreed with you. Magnus Hirschfeld in the Institute for Sexual Decision. He did not believe there was anything wrong with people like us. I used to be able to walk around with my trousers and cropped hair, and no one would bat an eyelash. But now I can't go a day without being called ma'am or miss. I had no idea. Might be able to get away with it for now, playing Viola. It's all method acting and whatnot. But after this show ends, I don't know what I'll do. Sometimes there are days when shame comes crawling up my throat and it takes every ounce of willpower I have to not let it strangle me. I'm not ashamed of who I am, I am only ashamed to live in a world that has destroyed so many people's lives for the sake of conformity. Where is Dr. Heschmuth now? Surely not Germany, France. He died last year. In the Institute. What happened to him? The same thing that happens to every other piece of degeneracy in Germany. Went up in smoke. I am sorry. Do you think he'll stay in New York? I don't think Val would be too happy if I stuck around his place for much longer. What about you? What will you do? Go back to Hollywood, I suppose. Perhaps you could come with me. Come with you. You really are a fine actor, Ezra. I know a good many people that would pay to see your face on the screen. You do that for me? My dear, I would do everything in my power to see you succeed. Is this, um, God, is that even a question? Yes. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Rachel comes in. Then she'll see we've more than figured it out. That's not the answer I was looking for. Just kiss me again! Thank you. 
bottles of this and that? Do we have a deal? Wow, are you in here? I think I left part of my costume behind. Oh, hello. Hello. I hate to break up the cozy core, but my hose has vanished. Have you seen them? I think I saw a dove sleeping on them by the sink. Thank you. I thought Rachel was going to murder me. Get those back, you ungrateful animal. <laughs> <laughs> another 
utterly enthralling conversation. <laughs> Why don't we pick it up again some other time? Wait a minute. I know all about what you were keeping over there. Pardon? You didn't think anybody would notice those crates? I have no idea what you are talking about. I know all about your little side meat, Kaufman. You're not very good at it, though, are you? You should just be grateful I didn't kick your teeth in all those years ago. It's not my fault you decided to leave your wife. <laughs> I think you just take pleasure in ruining other people's lives. Take your detective, for example. Good thing he finally realized how much of a scumbag you are. How dare oh, you? Were you on your way over to him just now? Go ahead. I hope he plucks out your liver, eats it raw, and it chokes him on the way down. If you ever use my theater like that again, I will turn you into the police. That's a promise. Kaufman. Oh, so we're back to surnames, are we? What should I call you then? Mikhail Davidovich? Kishka? Or just Detective? No, I think I'll stick with your human name. Thank you very much. You look well. You look like someone scraped you off their weight tip. Charming as ever. What do you want? I came to apologize. You were right, and I'm sorry. I don't think we should have that conversation here. Open up! Don't! Austin Nolan Howell of the NYPD 7th Precinct. I have a warrant out for the arrest of one Professor Valentin Kaufman, alias the Magpie. Where is he? You bastard! Val, I didn't! I swear to God! You're arresting him on what charges? Breaking the statute of prediction. You cannot arrest him. I hired him as entertainment. You have no right to barge in here. There are a good many other things, starting with the letter S, that he is also being charged for. Swindling, smuggling. I could go on, but I'm afraid the list gets rather
out of the unsavory because of company. Although, who knows? You never can tell what you lost. This is ridiculous. He wasn't paid anything for the job. We have evidence to the contrary. Bring him along. I'm hand to this instant. Ezra, let him go now. What? 
your official arrest record states that they found three crates of machine guns and over a thousand rounds of ammunition. That's simply not possible. Unless... Unless what? There was a woman yesterday. Before the show, she came into the shop. She said she had a few crates that needed looking after. Jesus. You, you were an idiot. Clearly. How was I supposed to know? You don't just go taking crates from people you know nothing about. Do you know who she was? Vera something or other. Markov. Vera Markov. The film actress? Yes. More importantly, the daughter of Piotr Markov. <clears throat> oh, oh dear. You got into bed with the daughter of one of the biggest import-export companies on the Atlantic seaboard and didn't even think to question it? Jesus, Val, they've got ties everywhere. I'm not afraid to chop off a few fingers if someone gets in their way. Yes, I know. Where do you think all those things you kept asking me to move were going to? Jesus Christ. You seem rather intimately acquainted with them. They used to be. So what does your sordid past have to do with me? You know I avoid the big boys, most certainly don't run guns most of the time. <laughs> he was caught up with them, and now it seems Ezra is unfortunately entangled as well. God, is she all right? Where is she? She's fine. They're out on me. So... I've been in hot water with that family before and lived to tell the tale. That word always leaves a funny taste in the mouth. So what on earth did you do? When I was in the military. Oh, well, here we go again. When I was in the military, I spent half my time looking for a boy named Oleg. Oleg Markov. He and I had been together at the same seminary for a few years before we were caught. Together. His family got me kicked out and sent him to a sanatorium upstate. I tried to send him letters, but they all got returned to sender. My family cut me off, and that's how I met Rachel. She gave me a job when no one else would. How old were you? I just celebrated my 15th birthday. When I found out a few years later that he'd been shipped overseas, I went too. I had this funny notion that if I joined up, I'd find him over there, sitting in a bombed out church, or singing hymns in the mud. And did you find him? No. All I got from my trouble was a piece of shrapnel in my hip and his death certificate. He died a week before the gun stopped firing. Why have you never told me any of this before? I thought you knew. Maybe not all the details, but... So this great big story all of us are wrapped up in, it all boils down to you if you hadn't kissed some boy when you were a teenager. None of this would have happened. Would have happened one way or another. You might have never met. In very different circumstances. You know, sometimes I wonder what it would have been like if Rachel had never brought you in as a consultant. You would have never found Herman. That was a joint effort, and you know it. You would have been lost without me. Do you remember that stakeout at the Pachyderm? You kept ordering drink after drink, and when Herman came in, you called me on your lap and kissed me as you walked past. And then that night when I caught you tailing me in the alley and almost cut your throat open with a knife until I remember the set of your shoulders. Even in the dark, I could tell. God, I missed that coat. So do I. Whatever happened to it? Lost it in a high-stakes poker game? You're joking! I wish I was. After five years, you think you know a fellow, and yet... Did we ever really know each other at all? I suppose leaving out the fact that you're half Jewish is rather telling. Much of what we had was just convenience. Being with you was never convenient. Always standing over me like a bubby with a pot of soup. Maybe it was convenient for you. Maybe. Well, I suppose none of this really matters if I never get out of here. So be a deer and shoot. Oh, I didn't mention it, did I? You're free to go. What? Out on bail, that is. You complete and utter best! Ah, watch the hip! Sorry. Sorry. I suppose we should have that conversation now. 
think if you wait one day. So, now what? I don't know. You don't know? I thought you were supposed to be the Devil May Care P.I. thought I was the P.I. with the heart of gold. Well, same thing. What's your big plan to fix all of this? I told you. I only got out of a scrape with that family once. Well, here's <clears throat> hoping we survive the second time. what you 
just said to me very slowly. Please, Mrs. Mirage, I understand I mean you no disrespect. Please, for the sake of an old one, my ears are just beginning to go. Mm -hmm. Very well. I'm offering to take the dinner off your hands. So I'll pay you a sizable amount of money for it. How sizable? More than you would make in your entire six-week run if you sold out every night. And why in God's name would I let you do that? How long have you been shackled here, Mrs. Mirachi? A decade? Two? This place is practically an antique, and I have it on good authority that Yiddish theater is on its way out. That's ridiculous! Really, I'm making a very competitive offer. I simply cannot fathom why you refuse it. And what would you put in its place? A music hall? A movie palace? Oh, nothing so dramatic. I'd tear the place down and start a new I think we should consider it. What?! <laughs> That's more money than we've seen in years. We can't simply close down our own show. Miss Markov. Oh, do call me Vera. I utterly detest format. Ms. Markov, if you would want to. <laughs> Just a moment, speak to my husband. Of course. I'll wait outside and let you mull things over. Don't tell me you're actually in favor of this nincompoopery. Think about it, doll face. This production has been riddled with problems, and now our two actresses have been arrested. I said me should have posted the bail an hour ago. What's even worse is that now we have an association with that sidekick to deal with. And then there was that ridiculous deal of yours. I called it off! Not before it made it into the papers. Scandal always draws in the crowds. We have a hit show on our hands, and she has the nerve to come in here and offer to buy us out. What a conniving little harpy. <laughs> I think we should just take the money and go someplace else. And put 30 people out of work? We're barely making enough money to keep the show afloat as it is. I can negotiate with this woman. Oh, negotiate? Hmm. And what's that involve? A long, slow, candlelit dinner where you schmooze over lobster thermidor and charm her out of her girdle? <laughs> <laughs> I hate to break the news to you, Herman, but I don't think she goes in for your type. And by the way, when you say we, I assume you're using it in the majestic plural form. What? You see, by we, you can't possibly mean us. I believe that glorious honor goes to yourself and Yael. Ah, oh, my dear, that was years ago. No, it wasn't. I think you better take a look at this. Why this is absurd. You're not telling me you spent hours sneaking around with the camera. Oh, I didn't have to. I sent, I hired Misha months ago. You know, Herman, it's a real shame. You could have been more creative in choosing your little hiding hole. I knew it was up to no good. <laughs> when I married you, one of the conditions was that I got utter control over your family's crumbling, broken down. Fixing up the toast of the Jewish Rialto sounded like a dream in everything that we are known for is because of me. All of it. When I first had Misha look into you, it wasn't so much of a shock to find out about the affair. Herman is Herman, I said to myself. If I have to endure a philander in my bed for the sake of a successful business, so be it. Of course, that was before I found out you were funneling a quarter of our profits into your own pocket. I know you. You never had a head for numbers. I checked our account, Herman. It's all there. You know, when all this is over and done, you can take that suitcase of yours, the one that hasn't seen the light of day in five years, and pack up and live with that woman. Is that all you demand? No, of course not. <laughs> <laughs> then you'll sign over all of the rights of the debate to me. And this will be at an end. I've spent a lifetime letting your indiscretions fall by the wayside, but not this time. It's outrageous! I won't stand for it! If you don't agree, I'm not sure the aisle is blacklisted from working at any of the other theater companies on the East Coast ever again. You can keep the money that you took, not that there was very much of it to begin with. You have no right! On the contrary! I think that after 30 years, I have earned every right. And what about you? You'll be all alone, and then where will you be? I really don't think you want to know what I would do to you. You want to be by yourself the rest of your life? A childless old woman with barely any friends to speak of. I hardly think I'd be alone with your ghost digging up the place. <laughs> Ms. Markov, you can come back in. <laughs> Have you made a decision, Mrs. Mirage? Yes. This theater is not for sale today or any other day. 
I must insist. If you do not leave at this very instant, it would be my absolute pleasure to have one of the stage managers drag you out of here on those very shiny shoes of yours. <laughs> very well. Thank you both for your time. I do hope you'll reconsider. Harmon, why don't you show her out? And give my regards to Yael. <laughs>
She used to leave them lying around for me. I dry them and hang them in my room. How sweet. There's a note, too. Even here. <coughs> my dearest T, we'll see each other again soon, love B. There's an address for hotels called in the back. I changed my mind. That is distinctly terrifying. <laughs> It's not an overt threat. We can't ask them to investigate on the grounds of an innocuous card and some flowers. Besides, how many bouquets did you have in your dressing room with notes just like this one? Too many to count. Exactly. The police won't see anything out of the ordinary. Just another actress overwhelmed with secret admirers. Might even be envious. There's really not much we can do. If we use the evidence of Black Note from months ago, we risk damaging Theo's reputation. She's been in the papers enough as it is. What about Val? She framed him. No, your cousin already had a number of rather illegal things hidden here. It's a wonder they didn't find them. You mean illegal? You didn't know? Your cousin is one of the most feared criminals of the New York underworld. What? <laughs> Flatter me, Misha. You were a guy? You didn't know? You did? <laughs> I like to check up on people before I hire them. Of course, I didn't put two and two together until years later. Your cover isn't as good as you think it is, you know. See? I told you. Knock it off. That's why I always heard you bumbling around the night. And then when I asked you about it, you pretended not to know what I was talking about. This is ridiculous. Are there any other horribly pressing secrets that need to come to light? Or can we concentrate on how to get out of this mess? Yes. Were you ever going to give my sweater back? <laughs> <laughs> that sweater! I didn't realize it was yours. Don't worry, you can keep it. I got it off an old sea dog who spent most of the last century on various polar expeditions. He wanted me to summon the ghost of his brother, who had drowned at the tender age of 17. The sweater was apparently his last memento of him, and <coughs> I told him I liked the cabling, so he was so grateful he gave it to me. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> you wore a dead man's sweater for two years? <laughs> well, you really could have given it back sooner. <laughs> I don't see what's funny about this. You know, I don't think I saw it before, but you two are exactly the same. We, we are, are not, not the same. <laughs> We've been over this already. I didn't sell them out. When did you two get so chummy as to the nature of our relationship? I never wanted to talk about it. I didn't think a broken heart would be of any interest to anyone but a clinician. <laughs> Doesn't exactly make for the most stimulating conversation. Can we wrap this up? Is there anything else? Anything else at all? Or can we get down to business? I thought you said there was nothing you could do. Actually, there is something. God, that's his scheming face. You can share it with the rest of us, Kaufman? <coughs> I was just thinking. Was Vera the only relationship you've ever had with a woman? Yes. Why? Well, if she blackmails you, she'd be implicating herself in the process. It certainly wouldn't look very good for her if she dragged her own name through the mud. So it's an empty threat? It's very much real. The point is, What's to stop you from using the same information against her? One call to her daddy and this could all be over. No. You haven't come up with anything better in months. No, absolutely not. I don't like it either, but there doesn't seem to be another way. Consider payback for all that misery that family inflicted on you years ago. I swore I would never let what happened to me happen to anyone else ever again. Not if I can help it. Misha, it would be ridiculous. I don't go in for revenge plots. Compromise, please, just this once. That is rich coming from someone whose livelihood depends on swindling others. Says the man who stood by and let me. I understand that you're upset, Mishka. Don't call me that. What other choice do we have? If Vera buys the Divic, she puts all four of us out of <clears throat> jobs. Ezra and I could be on the next boat back to Germany if this all falls apart. Just because they chewed you up and spat you back out doesn't mean you have to let it happen again. 
please, don't ask this of me. Misha. Ask me to run something for you. Ask me to cover for you. Ask me to join in some harebrained scheme to rob the Met. I will take the fall for you. Just please, do not ask me to do this. No, ultimately, the decision isn't any of ours. It's Theo. All right, let's do it. Are you with us, Misha? I'll release you from our contract if no, you've already done enough. I won't fault you for leaving now. Damn it all. Well, I suppose that's all sorted then. We'll need a code name for our married band. Not that any of us look very married. Suppose that can be fixed. Wine, spirits, tea, anyone? Spirits, I think. What do we need? A code name. Every good organization, secret organization has one. What about the four idiots? <laughs> <laughs> nice one, Dostoevsky. We need something with a little bit more panache. The four magpies is a nice drink to it. That makes us sound like a gang of teenage ragamuffins. <laughs> you wooed me, not ragamuffins, for seeing. For Christ's sake, we don't need a code name. I've got it. The Divics on Orchard Street. Why are we Divics? You told me once there were these vengeful spirits or something like that. And we all want something from this, don't we? One tiny problem. We have a Gentile in our midst. My apologies, Misha. I suppose we could be three Divics in the bear on Orchard Street. <laughs> I'm a Gentile. What? Father was born in a shtetl called David Hordak. I don't think that's how it works. Traditionally. Not according to the cure. Well, I say, damn tradition and damn Hitler. Four debits it is, then. What are we drinking to? The degradation of morality. <laughs> <laughs> no need to repeat what they already call us in the papers. Just imagine the headlines. Four Jewish queers tear down New York. Ohio. <laughs> Val, are you there? Oh, hello. Gone. All memory erased of her time spent on stage there. 
Kaya Horowitz would die in a great blaze of smoke, and Theo Howard would emerge, shining and new. That's not true! It was something I joked about, but I never wanted it in reality. How can I let go of it all? You changed your name. I changed my name because who is going to pay to see a Jewish girl from Brooklyn as a leading lady? This is all so silly. It doesn't matter if you changed your name or your hairstyle. You're still my darling girl. I don't see why you called this meeting in the first place. You'll be coming home with me when all of this is done. No, I won't. I'm not coming home with you. Well, you're still as knuckle-headed as ever. It's really such a pity that news of our little fling will be gracing all the newspapers tomorrow. They'll bypass the gossip column and head straight to the front page. No, I'm afraid you won't be doing that. And who's going to stop me? You haven't done it before, and you won't do it now. Not so. You're going to speak to me like that step into the light. Who are you? Mikhail Olkowski, private investigator. Mikhail Olkowski. Oh, but that wasn't your name before, was it? Now I remember you were the boy that crawled into bed with Owen all those years ago. I heard about the Abruzzi boy for years. What a rotten fellow you turned out to be. You release any information about my client to the papers, Theodor Markov will receive an anonymous call about the unsavory information of his daughter. That's the closest you'll come to a threat without a gun, is it? This is very much a threat, Miss Markov. You wouldn't. Look at your face. You'd never be able to send that letter. My dear Miss Markov, while my partner may have some qualms about this whole affair, I assure you I have absolutely none. Who's going to care one iota about some small-time crook about the rat? I see you failed to do your research. You thought you could put a hit out on my shop and nobody would notice. But I've worked with your father before, and I don't think he'd be so happy to hear what you've done. You'll be disowned, no doubt. <laughs> You're bluffing. My dear, I'd show you the bill of sales, but... It would be so much easier to just give him a call. No. You don't have a gun either. I prefer knives. Well, 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 it seems you've forced us into an impasse. These certainly are some interesting friends you've chosen to surround yourself with, Theo. One more thing. Haven't you already demanded enough? You withdraw any claim you have on the Dimmick. Very well. You know you'll never work in Hollywood again. Not as long as I'm there. Goodbye, sweetheart. <sighs> when you called me up a few days ago asking if I finally wanted to act, you declined to tell me if I'd be acting in a comedy or a tragedy. And what do you think now? I don't know. Those were all empty threats, yes? I suppose that's the last one we see in your heart. <laughs> I don't know. You never work again? I'll punch your teeth in. <laughs> you shouldn't. I don't think it matters in the end. Of course it matters. If we don't fight, we'll never get to be in a movie with Fritz Lang. Or show me California and all of those silly people and their silly hats and garden parties. Is your name always Kaya Horowitz? Yes. Was your name always Ezra Pardo? I don't really care, and really, it's none of my business. Regardless, I'm glad that I met you as Ezra and you met me as Thea. Things might have been very different if we had been Miss Horowitz and Fraulein Pardo. Most people I am still in cloud line water. Not to me. Can you believe that we still have to perform tonight? I know. It's going to be awful. This will be a dress for you. Forget all your lives. <laughs> That'll make Rachel ecstatic. We 
should talk to Misha. What do you think we'll do now? Now that all of this is over. Technically, I have him hired for the duration of the show. However, I have an idea. Dear God. Come along, Herr Pardo. I'm almost finished with my set here. I'll be returning to France soon. That's great, and the girl, is she excited to be going home? Lou's staying here. Her father's sending her to a finishing school somewhere to stay. She and I are... Well, that's a different kettle of fish entirely. I'm sorry to hear it. Yes, I suppose there'll be fewer distractions now. That's for writing. Yeah. This is, uh, I don't understand. Third class ticket on the SS Chaplain, still in three weeks. What you do with it is your concern, but I wouldn't mind company. Besides, I could have you as a consultant on the art form of the public. Heaven knows why, but I like you, Val Kaufman. You're a good man. You wouldn't go as far as that. Regardless of whether or not you come, I believe you owe me a couple of drinks before I leave. I can certainly see to that. Well, that's that then. Damn it, Hole, I'm going to be late. I have an appointment with the Professor of Medieval Literature at Columbia. Good to see you, Val. Glad to be a part of this whole little adventure. Such a run. Goodbye. Five o'clock. A celebration is in order, then. A celebration? You solved the case. I didn't solve anything. She left. You and Ezra are safe. I'm out of prison, and you're by my side. What more could I ask for? Do you really think she'd leave that easily? Woman's like a brush fire. One of the ones you read about. What's that supposed to mean? I don't think she cares about what happens to her. Take down as many people as you can on your way out. How on earth do you know that? Just like a brother. Impossibly exacting. The opposite, rather. Ole wanted to save as many people as humanly possible. You can have either everything or nothing. Why on earth would you compromise? Is that what you were whispering about earlier? No. I don't think you're really worried about Vera. If there was a major concern, you'd be out plotting something somewhere, not blooming away in here. There's something you're not telling me. Noticed that, did you? Ah, uh, we've known each other for years now. I assume my observations were going to improve eventually. I thought you were supposed to be a psychic. Your scintillating wit never fails to astonish me. You can't shoot it. What we did was abominable. We've been over this before. Or, Misha, we did it because there was no other way forward. We could have thought of something. I'm a PI, for God's sake. I'm supposed to be good at this. It took us days to even have come up with this plan. And besides, we didn't actually call her father. That's to say we won't ever. Misha? They as good as murder Oleg when they sent him over there to fight. But no one could arrest Pyotr Markov when the cause of death had already been printed as sniper fire from some German kid, barely any air on his cheeks. Do you want me to read for you? What? Cards, or feelings, if you prefer, it might be easier on your stomach. What good would that do? It might put you at ease. How is a monologue about what my fate holds going to help? It's more of a conversation. With no. Me. offered me another job. She, she wants me to go to Hollywood and burn Ezra once all of this is over. A satisfactory performance all around, then. Apparently. And will you take it? I've been here too long. I can use the 
change of scenery. I'm tired of all this damn snow. What would you say to Paris? Paris? you noticed. And now? I don't know. We should have met when we were older and knew what we were doing. Or younger. Cast your cards? That's not really how it works. Go. It's getting late. Just stay for the evening. Bye, Val. Catch me following you along one of these nights. <laughs> I'd rather 